Happy Easter weekend and welcome to day six of my 12 days of Easter. I can't believe we're already on day six, halfway there. And today's job, or the first of today's jobs, is to take cuttings from the dahlias that I've been starting off. Now, some of you might have been following along with this and I'll actually make a playlist for these dahlias. Um, and you might know that I've been um, starting my dahlias off in sandwich bags this year. So I've never done this before. It is working so well. I am so pleased. Um, I've just given them actually a little water because they were very dry. But I do think that's the key to doing this is um, don't overwater in your bags because that can create mould. So let the moisture that's already in the compost do the work. But look at the roots in the bag. How fabulous is that? And these two in particular are very ready to be taken off. Now there are various ways to take your cuttings, just as there are various ways to start off your dahlias. And um, I've seen three. So one is that you just take the cutting. So you're cutting at the very base of the shoot. The other one is that you take an entire tuber with your cutting. And the Sarah Raven method that I've only just come across is that you take a little slice of the tuber with the cutting. <laughs> now, I think the cutting itself will suggest which of these methods is most likely to produce a good plant. So this year I'm going to put the cuttings into multi-purpose compost with perlite. Last year I did sand and that is an option, but I feel I do so much better when I'm just using multi-purpose compost. So I'm going to do that. And the other little trick that I've got, and I've never seen anybody do this before with daily cuttings, but I've just taken a leaf off of my aloe vera plants and I'm going to use the aloe vera gel <laughs> I'm going to use the aloe vera gel to um, use as a rooting hormone at the base of the cutting or the bit of tuber it's also antibacterial and that was one of my fears is that um, they're going to get some kind of disease now I'm going to plant them into these trays um, I think people usually plant them into sort of nine centimeter pots but I want to see the root growth so I thought these clear plastic ones would be quite good and they're quite deep so there's plenty of room for the roots okay let's take our first cutting we'll do this one um, so I'm going to roll the bag down so it's easier to work with and I'm going to take these two bigger shoots I think I'll let this one grow on a little more uh, let's have a look so I think for both of those I'm not really going to get much of the tuber okay so I think these are just going to be the shoots themselves right so I'm going to cut as close to the tuber as I can possibly get. There we go. Okay, so there is my, my cutting. Now I want to get rid of all the lower leaves that might go under the surface of the soil. So I don't want them to rot there. They can come off. I think that one can come off. And I'm also going to pinch out the growing tip. Okay, I pinch that out. That should help it branch as well. Um, and there's not that much leaf on there, so there's not much it's going to lose So um, in terms of moisture. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. Okay, and then I'm going to rub it on the aloe vera gel. There we go and then just push it into the side of the cell there we go okay one done so that is that one done i'm going to let these two grow on and i think there's another shoot coming there so we should get another three off of that so i might take another one and then leave the other two to pot up and grow on with the tuber
I have 14 new plants. Well, I hope I will have. These are now gonna go into the house. I'm not using the propagator lid at the moment, so I think I'll probably put that over them because you don't want the cuttings to lose lots of moisture. So that will help keeping the, um, the air humid. I don't think I'm gonna put them on heat, mostly because the tomatoes have got the heat at the moment. When the tomatoes come off, I might put these on. And the tubers, these will go back into the house and continue, I hope, to grow shoots, some of which I can take cuttings and some of which will stay on the tuber and then get potted up in, I don't know, a couple of weeks, maybe? We'll see how we do with the shoots. Well, as it turns out, some of those tomatoes were ready to come off the propagator. So I've taken some off and I've put the dahlia cuttings on. So they have got a little bottom heat. Job done, Dory. Are you ready for a walkie? Shall we go for a walk? Come on then, I'll catch you later. Welcome back. The rain has mostly stopped. I'm in the front garden. This is the front garden food forest, kinda. And I'm gonna do my next propagation from here. So I'm gonna create some more free plants like the dahlias from this area. But before I do that, it really needs a really, really good tidy. I haven't touched this area probably since the autumn. So I'm gonna get in there. I've got my hori hori, I've got my mini hoe. I'm gonna do a good clean up and then we're gonna do our next propagation. Well, it got rained off, but um, most of that got done. Most of, there's still some weeds in here, but at least I can see what I'm working with now. I've also just tried to stake the Taunton Dean kale, um, which will make it easier to look for some shoots to propagate. But let's just have a quick look at what's in this bed. So the idea of this space is that it's a kind of food forest. It doesn't mean everything in here has to be edible, i.e. the tulips, um, but everything should be contributing to the biodiversity of the area. So, I mean, it's quite dominated now by the Taunton Dean kale, um, but there's things in here like gooseberries. This is tansy along the edge. We've got foxgloves in here, not edible, and forget-me-nots. There's an Austerian tree cabbage, like the ones I have on the plot. These are summer fruiting raspberries they're all along the side there are strawberries all over the bed and there were kales that have now gone to flower and i'm going to leave those in for now because they'll be good for the pollinators we've got a rhubarb down here as well and some weeds uh, there's a nice clump of strawberries that's need a little TLC, but hello, I see you. <laughs> and at the front of the bed is the apple tree, um, which has some beautiful blossoms coming. So we may get an apple from this tree this year. Also in the bed is um, garlic that I left in last year. So it's, uh, it's growing really rather well. And as featured on Danny's Live on Thursday evening, this is my perennial elephant garlic. So last year I just left one of the bulbs of elephant garlic in the ground to see what would happen. And it's, sho it's shooting and there are, let me see, at least five stalks coming off of that. And the idea is that you'll get a big clump of elephant garlics under there. Anyway, the reason we're out here is to get a cutting from this Taunton Dean kale. And um, Taunton Dean kale roots really well. And that's where I got my Taunton Dean kales from. They were from cuttings from Pippa Chapman. And you, what you're looking for is like a nice, sturdy side shoot. That should be a good one. There we go. Okay, so that's three. 
So I got my cuttings uh, in the mail before, and I can't quite recall now uh, what they looked like, but I know I just plonked plunk them into soil and they rooted and they were fine. So this is a bit of an experiment to see how to take the cuttings. And I've read various things, so I'm going to do it two ways and then we can compare the results. So with these short cuttings, so I'm going to take off, well, I'm going to take out the growing tip, as with the dahlias. So taking out the growing tip just means that it's going to put concentrate on root growth, growth as opposed to top growth. And then I'm going to trim down the leaves so that it's not going to expire too much. Is that the right word? There we go. So there's my, my little cutting. You just dip it in the rooting powder and tap it off and then push it into the compost. There we go. Now I've also taken some longer cuttings. I'm trying these longer ones because I feel like when um, I had them sent to me, they were more like that. They had more of a stem on them. So I'm just cutting underneath a leaf node and then trimming off the excess foliage and leaving the growing tip in this time. And now that they're watered, I'm just going to give them a little plastic hat. There we go. <laughs> so that's Taunton Dean Perennial Kale, done two ways, two different styles of cuttings, and we'll see which one does better. Tomorrow is Easter Sunday and you get a little break. I get a little break, but we pick up with our episode seven on Monday and then we'll have got our next six episodes Monday through to Saturday next week. Happy Easter. See you Monday.